Great. Thank you, Joe. And good morning to everyone who's in my time zone and good afternoon to the rest of you. Um, I, my name is Geetika. I'm with the California Department of Food and Agriculture. Um, I'm a senior environmental scientist in the department, uh, and I currently also supervise the implementation of two of our incentive programs, which are targeted towards reducing methane emissions from dairies. Um, so I will talk a little bit about both of those programs today and hopefully get lots of great questions from you that I can answer. Um, so yeah, I just want to say I'm really thankful for uh, this opportunity and to be able to connect with the national audience. Uh, we're doing lots of interesting things here in California, and it would be great to hear um, you all's perspective as well as questions about this as well. So the title of my presentation is California's Efforts to Reduce Greenhouse Gases from Dairy and Livestock Operations. Um, Um, so before I even get into our programs, there's a little bit of background. Um, you know, California has um, some laws in place regarding greenhouse gas emissions and climate change. So one of them, um, you know, was our uh, one of the pa uh, laws that passed in 2006, I believe, or 2004 or 6, I might be missing this. But we have an overall kind of greenhouse gas reduction target, which was originally to reduce our uh, greenhouse gas emissions to 1990 levels by 2020. And there have been many amendments that have been made ever since. Uh, but one of the functions that's important as part of those types of laws is that uh, in California, we measure the greenhouse gas emissions from all of the different sectors and maintain an inventory so that we can then know how much we've reduced over time. So in this pie chart, um, I have specifically the emissions that we are um, recording from agriculture. So agriculture as a sector contributes to 8% of the state's total emissions, which is, you know, that's not the lion's share. The lion's share is with other industries and transportation. And out of this 8%, though, the interesting piece is, that, is our dairy and livestock operations. Um, as you can see, the two biggest slices in the pie are the blue one and the orange one, and they both relate to dairy and livestock management. Um, the blue one is manure management, whereas the orange one is enteric fermentation, which is, you know, a technical, fancier term for just, you know, belching of cows because when they belch and burp, they release methane into the atmosphere. We do have a large population of dairy cows in California. We're the number one dairy state in the nation. Um, milk is also one of our top three commodities, um, agricultural commodities that we produce. Uh, so the impact from dairies is... Um, is large, but that also means that the opportunity to achieve greenhouse gas reductions from dairies is also quite big. Um, and currently, our programs kind of um, focus on that manure management piece, which is that blue piece of the pie. We don't have enough scientific research right now to fully understand how to reduce the, the belching um, piece. And I'm sure many of you have seen lots of funny cartoons and videos everywhere with the cows, the gas masks, or backpacks, and I just want to say we're not there yet in California, so we're going to focus on the manure piece. Um, so um, with that, I just kind of want to highlight a couple of policies that have been important in this regard. Uh, we did have a law that passed in 2016 which says that um, dairy and livestock operations have to reduce um, their methane emissions to 40% of the 2013 levels by 2030. So that's kind of like a goal or our target. Um, and up until 2024, um, that's when we will start evaluating how far along we are in that target and if there should be any regulations. But it's not currently regulated, but, but there's a future possibility. So our current approaches are mostly focused on voluntary reductions. So the target is not for each individual dairy producer. It's for the industry as a whole. Um, so the way we are kind of looking at it right now is by offering incentive programs through the department, and hopefully we can have, um, you know, dairy producers that can participate in the programs, and hopefully, you know, this target can be met even before 2024, before there is a regulation issue that comes up. So we have two programs in the department. One is called the Dairy Digester Research and Development Program, and the other one is called Alternative Manure Management Program. And it's called alternative. The word really there uh, means it's alternatives to digesters uh, because, you know, over time we've come to realize uh, digesters don't always work out for every dairy. Um, you know, sometimes, like, you know, there's the issue that the dairy has to have a minimum size, um, number of cows that can contribute manure to the digester, but um, 
the the larger reasons that we've seen uh, in our work is really what happens to that biogas in the end um, that's produced from a digester. And if a dairy is not located close enough to an electric uh, line or grid, or if it's not located close enough to a gas pipeline, um, then it can be challenging to run a digester. And so in those cases, we want to have options uh, that are not centered on biogas and all of those options we cover in that alternative program. For enteric fermentation, like I said, we don't really have enough science and uh, you know, data available there for a program to be developed, uh, but there are a few research projects that are currently undergoing to look at some solutions for that aspect as well. So um, this is just a plug for, again, for just our you know, state policy that enables this program. So this program gets funding from our, uh, California Climate Investments, which is another uh, term for our cap and trade program. So you know, all of the different sectors that produce greenhouse gases, or majority of the sectors, are capped and regulated. If they produce carbon emissions larger than a certain threshold, then they have to pay a revenue. Um, and that revenue is then collected um, and then distributed amongst different state government agencies um, to have programs, and then those programs um, can track greenhouse gas reduction. So all of the projects funded by the programs are those that will reduce carbon. Um, so, you know, we have projects in many different sectors, including housing, transportation, and, you know, urban development, but we also have um, programs in agriculture, and that's kind of the funding source for our dairy programs here. Yeah. 